I'm back at the bench here trying to find the ultimate uh, dash light bulb for these old Mercedes. And I've got a couple of the original incandescent bulbs in this W126 cluster right here. And I'm checking the temperature of these. And over here on this side, I'm getting up to uh, between 175 and 180 degrees. And if I reach in here and touch these, whoo! <laughs> Ooh, through the gloves, I could burn my skin. Those are the original bulbs. And you might be thinking, well, Kent, why are you using this temperature gun? Well, why is that so important? Um, in my quest to find the right bulb, I've got to make sure they don't get too hot. And let me explain why. You know, I picked this up to turn it over. I'm thinking, wow, this is pretty warm. Just the white plastic is pretty warm. <laughs> Whoa. Look at that, 133, 135 degrees. That's warm. I want to start by showing you this instrument cluster housing out of a W123 Mercedes. Pay particular attention to these two white plastic pieces. You're going to already notice some deformation here and some discoloration. The bulbs fit right down. There's a bulb right here that goes into this chamber, and there's another bulb that goes into that chamber. So there's two bulbs that light up the three instruments. Now you can see from the color of this white plastic that we've had some real heat here. This one, you know, you can see it start to bubble, and I can show you other ones, you know, that have uh, not so bad here, but you can see where it's gotten hot, and what happens is this will eventually warp and deform, and you'll lose light. You'll also lose light from the fact that these are turning brown. If you can find some good quality white plastic paint and paint these, you can even increase the original light. But if you continue to use the original incandescent bulbs, eventually it's going to brown up like this. They do get hot. So you can poo-poo these uh, LED lamps all you want, but the new generation of these, they don't get that hot. They just don't get that hot. Some of the older uh, first generation LEDs, they got really hot, almost burned your fingers. But there's improvements being made. There's heat sinks now. The newest generation LED bulbs, they're not polarity sensitive, and I'll explain more about that later. But you can see what happens here is the light comes off the bulb and travels up this clear plastic light tunnel and then it reflects back against the instruments. So you get light loss through this tunnel, you can get light loss leaks through here, but when this gets deformed and gets discolored, you really start to lose the strong light that comes from the original bulb. So you can kind of compensate for that with an LED. Now the W126 cluster, they made some changes. They brought the plastic right out close. So the light would transfer through this clear plastic, come all the way through this. They tightened up the chamber here. They made it a little wider. And the light comes out right here and reflects back against the bulbs. So the W126 bulbs are a little bit brighter than the 123. Now I want to say right away, I think when these were new, it was probably adequate instrumentation lighting. Some people say, oh no, I don't like bright lights. You know, it ruins my night vision. Well, you drive down the road today with all these new dazzling headlights out there. <laughs> you know, night vision's a joke anymore. Maybe if you live on some county lane road where you never see another headlight and you want to save your night vision, then of course you want to dim the bulbs. And I had some criticism, you know, over these bulbs. You know, we've got I've got three here that I'm testing now, and people say, well, they're too bright. Well, these are dimmable. <laughs> so if they're too bright and you have a potentiometer that works, just dim it down. But at least if you need the brightness, you've got it when you need it. So some people have asked, well, what about those older Mercedes like the W114 and the W115 and the R107 and the W116? No, sorry. I'll explain why I don't recommend <laughs> LED bulbs for some of those and why there's not even any available for some of the others. This is typical of the instrument clusters from the mid-60s up to the mid-70s. This was in the W108, W109, 
W114, W115. Notice how narrow it is. You have two bulbs, one right here and one right here. But notice you don't have any light tunnels. These get direct light right into this chamber and they shine right into these instruments. So I found with these particular models, you don't have the same light loss problems that you do with the, the other ones. And I don't recommend LED. You can put LED in there, they're going to be very bright. So make sure if you do put LEDs in these older models that you have a working potentiometer because most likely you will need to turn the intensity down. Okay, let's move on to the W116 and the R107. This cluster here, you know, first showed up in the early 70s and, and ran, I mean, the basic cluster ran all the way up to 1989. So you've got, what, 18 plus years that they use this arrangement. Notice that there's lenses all the way out here, but there's no light tunnels here. See, there's no light transfer tunnels in these clusters. So the bulb is on a very long tube. Look at this. Look at how long that is. And there's the bulb. See that little bulb right there? So I haven't uh, been able to find any LEDs that are that small. So for you uh, W116, R107, C107 owners, you're pretty much going to have to stick with the original bulbs for these type of clusters here. And then when the W201 and W124 were introduced, I think they improved the light tunnels significantly in the way the heat would uh, dissipate because you don't see quite the same amount of deformation. Obviously, if you put aftermarket bulbs in here that get really hot, you're going to have a problem. But you can see here the length of the light tunnel is shorter and it reflects out here. So you can use LEDs in the W201, the W124. If you have these type of clusters, just make sure you have a working potentiometer because if you do put our LED bulbs, which will work, into these clusters, you're going to have some very bright instruments at night. Okay, now I'm going to show you some of the other testing I'm doing. <laughs> some of the other bulbs I've been playing around with, checking for heat, checking for light, uh, and the types of light because you know, a lot of people like the white light, but most people like the warm white. Most people like the original color. Now I've even got some orange ones I'll show here just for fun. One of the things I figured out right away is when working with some of these LEDs, you know, you don't want to look right at them. I start seeing stars. <laughs> and so I kind of point them down when I'm doing my heat tests. And you can see the color variations. You have some really bright white ones. You have some warm white maybe in the 3000, 3500 range. These are up in the 6000 light colors. It's really tough to find the right one. Just a few weeks ago we found a really nice warm white one. It's not even on the bench here, but suddenly those aren't available anymore. So I'm back to the drawing board and I'm testing some of these fifth generation. This one right here is fifth generation and it's pretty amazing. It's got a heat sink in it and I'm looking at the temperature now and it's, you know, about... Yeah. <laughs> I gotta keep my hand over, try to hit the gun because this thing is really bright. You know, it's coming up to about 90 degrees on the bulbs, but you get down to the base and it's down to 70. So that's real important that there's heat dissipating. What I'm going to do is continue to do some testing and we'll see what our sources are like. And I'll come back in a week to two weeks and let you know my final verdict and the light bulb that we're going to actually sell moving into 2021 because some of the other old style we've been able to get are no longer available, at least now. In parting, I at least want to show you this orange color that I've been messing around with. It's distinctively orange. It might be kind of nice for some people, okay? Because I know some people like that orange glow for night vision. Here is one that is the bright white, and this is the one that is similar to our old style, and it's polarity sensitive, meaning it can only plug in one way and work. So if you pull it out and plug it in the other way, see, it won't work. So a lot of these LEDs, by the way, 
if you buy them from other sources and you don't know, if you plug in it doesn't work, just unplug it and turn it 180 degrees and plug it back in. That means they're polarity sensitive. Where some of the new ones, like this one, say it'll go in that way and you pull it out and you plug it in this way, and it lights right up. So I kind of like the ones that aren't polarity sensitive. And that's part of the advantage of these fifth generation LEDs that are coming onto the market now.